Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're gonna be completing the quest while Gothic sleeps. The quest requirements are a bunch. Make sure that you check that you have completed all of them. Defender of Varrock, Path of Glufry, Fight Arena, Dream Enter, Hand in the Sand, Wanted, Temple of the Eye, A Tale of Two Cats, Nature Spirit, and Tears of Gothic. As well as have at least 180 or more quest points. Set requirements are 62 Hunter, 65 Herblore, 65 Farming, 66 Agility, 67 Magic, and 72 Thieving. I just need it. A Mind and every single elemental rune, which means Air, Water, Earth, and Fire. At least 19,720 coins. A Lantern Lens, which you can make by blowing Molten Gloss. A Sapphire Lantern from the Tears of Gothic's quest, simply buy a Lantern and then replace the lens with a Sapphire Gem and then light it. A Bronze Medium Helm, a Iron Chain Body, and an Unpowered Orb combined with 3 Cosmic Runes and 30 Elemental Runes. It doesn't matter which one as long as you're able to cast the Charge Orb spell. And finally, you will also need your best elemental combat spells. I think I'm just going to be using the four wave spells. For the recommended items is one antidote or anti-poison, as well as some good food, armor, weapon and potions to defeat two bosses, one in the middle and one at the end of the quest. For the boss in the middle of the quest, you will need some telegraph runes, alchemy runes, Snare, Bind, or Entangle runes, as well as Weaken runes. For the boss at the end of the quest, you will need some good range gear with a crossbow and some good decent bolts. And for the melee switch, just bring a whip and that should be good enough. Then you'll also need a seed dipper if you haven't completed the mini quest Barbarian Training. And then also four times NPC contact. So you will need to go and change your spellbook and cast that spell four times, or you will need to teleport to Berthope, Canafis, Lunar Isle, and Shallow Village. For the teleports, I'm going to be using one teleport to the Fildy Hills, one teleport to a Spirit Tree, I'm going to be using the Crown Exchange, one teleport to McGruber's Woods, I'm going to be using the Fairy Ring Code ALS, one teleport to the Warriors Guild, Two teleport to Tears of Gothics, once again, Games Necklace. One teleport to Fight Arena, going to be using a Watchtower teleport. One teleport to Taverly, going to be using a Redirection Scroll on a House Tab. Eight teleports to Falador Castle. If you have an Achievement Diary Cape, you can use this eight times. Or if you do not, you could also get six regular Falador teleports. Then also two teleports to the Black Knight Castle, right next to the Mind Altar, and then about 4 teleports to any bank to prepare for the following sections of the quest. Now this inventory is a complete mess and you do not need everything currently in your inventory. On the contrary, you will need at least 2 empty inventory slots, but I think I'm just going to be dropping my super anti-poison after the first fight right after we have started this quest. Where we can start this quest is here at the crystal chest of Taverly Town. Let's talk to Ivy and select option 1 to start the quest and she will immediately make us go upstairs next to the crystal chest. There we'll find another NPC. After we've spoken to this NPC, two assassins who have followed us will start attacking. Both assassins use ranged. Activate protect from missiles to avoid taking damage. That is until one of the two assassins will shout now. Move away from its special attack and at the same time also activate protect from melee because the second archer will use a dragon dagger special attack. When the DDS spec is over you can switch back to protect from missiles. Do this until both the assassins are defeated. Oh. 
once they have been defeated, let's talk to Theorisk. And after this conversation is over, we will need to make our way to the fight arena. Two buildings north of the southeastern bar, they will find a launderer. That is the NPC that we'll need to talk to and bribe with 500 coins. You can avoid paying 500 coins by equipping a ring of Keras. So, I'm gonna be using a Watchtower Teleport. What is equal as fast is to use a Yanil Teleport if you've completed the Hard Ardoin Diary. Exit Yanil and go north. We will need to pass three buildings. The first one is the Yanil Agility Dungeon, the second one is the Big Bar and then a third one. The second building north of the bar in the southwest part of Fight Arena, enter the Laundry Room and let's talk to the launderer. Select option 1 to pay him 500 coins. After speaking to him, we will need to make our way to the Feldip Hills. To go talk to a hunting expert, the one that has the hunter cape. Let's go to the hunter cape expert. In the Feldip Hills, let's talk to him and select option 2. Or select option 3 if you already have 99 Hunter. After he has given you some more Mire Fungus, exit his hut west and you'll find an axe in a stump. Take it, take the bronze axe and then chop down any jungle tree going west. And continue going west until you see a dark pit trap. Once you see it, click on it to set up the trap and then use your given more pyre fungus on it to use it as bait. And now we simply need to wait for the wild brove to fall into the trap. The amount of time that it takes for the brove to fall into the trap depends on your hunting level, I think. Because on two accounts that I did this previously with, the brove fell into the trap immediately. While this one did not have 99 hunter, it took quite a lot longer. Next, dismantle the collapsed trap and let's make our way to the hunter expert. On our way there, we may drop our knife and our axe. We no longer need that, let's talk to the hunter expert, use the boar on it. And the hunter expert will train the boar that it will be able to sniff your dirty shirt. Next, let's go to Anybank to prepare for part 2. The items that we can deposit and are no longer needed are the knife, the axe, the antidote and our Feldy Pills teleport. The items that are currently needed are a mind, air, water, earth and fire rune. Make sure that you have that because we've teleported to the watchtower and those consume earth runes. I think there's only one rune left which is the earth rune. Which is the only rune that I do not have in my fucking inventory! At least a 19,220 coins and a lantern lens. Next, for the recommendations is 1. A weapon to defeat some axemen that only use melee. A sea dibber if you haven't completed the barbarian farming training. Then also a way to swap your spellbook to lunars so you're able to use NPC contact. If you're not going to be using NPC contact, you could also bring a teleport to Berthope, Canafis, Lunar Isle and Shallow Village. One stamina potion should also be more than enough. Then also I would recommend to have three empty inventory slots. And then lastly, before we go, make sure that you check your weight that it is above one kilo. For the teleports needed for part two is one to any spirit tree, one to Taverly, one to McGruber's Woods, about 5 to Falador Castle, 1 to the Warriors Guild and 1 to any bank to prepare for part 3. Let's make our way to the spirit tree of the battlefield of Khazard. I'm going to be using the spirit tree right here at the GE. Select option 3 to the battlefield of Khazard. Let's go southwest. South of the tree gnome village quest, the gnome tracker number 2, southwest. Go stand south of the broken table. Then drop the brove, and then use your dirty shirt on the brove. And then the broken table will have a search option. Pick up the brove, 
and then search the broken table. Once it has been opened, the broth has no longer a use. You may simply release it. Once it has been released, let's go downstairs. Open the door and let's go north. Use protect from melee if you want to. They're only come at 95. Follow the path going north to some stairs. Climb down those stairs into a small room with an old battered door. Click on the door to try to open it and you'll see the bottom word saying prohibited. One of these letters will represent a rune. This can either be the O, which is the mind rune, the H, which is the earth rune, or the E, which is the air or fire rune, or the D, which is a water rune. The rune that you will need to place in the old battle door is random for everyone. If you place the wrong rune in the door, you will take between 20 and 25 damage. Next, open the old battered door. I weigh zero. Try to look on the floor and you will see some floor wires. You will need to see the wire that has a thicker font. Follow that thicker floor wire and search that bookcase. Next, you will need to look around the room for another slightly thicker orange wire and search that bookcase. And you should do this five times to unlock the next room. Next, let's go southeast. The gate has been unlocked. Open it and then right click on the spiral staircase and search it. And read if you're able to manage to disable the trap. If you do not, then try again. Next, climb up. And in front of you, you'll find a curved desk. Search it. Next, next to you, you'll find a waste paper basket. Take it and search to find a key. Then go northwest and use your key on the most northern single squared bookcase and they should spawn a staircase. Once you're able to climb it, do so and go east and search the bed. Next, click on it again to open the bed chest and then select yes to insert the key. Next, right click on the bed chest and search to disable the trap there at the wall. If you do not, you will take 25 damage. Then open and search the bed chest for notes number two. Next, let's go back downstairs. And to be able to leave this puzzle room, we must know what our weight was when we first started the puzzle downstairs. To do so, go south, inspect the painting, cross over the broken wall and check the pressure gauge. It reads X amount of tickets. This is the amount of weight or kilograms that you have started this puzzle with. If you haven't dropped anything, it should be just plus two. Take some weight from the Western pile of weight. Take two kilograms or more, depending on what you've taken here. Then go north, east of the curved desk, Use your weight on the stone statue. Then exit going east. And once you've exited this room, you can make your way back to Taverly. Let's go back to the quest start. Let's go back upstairs. Talk to Theorisk. And he will read both the notes. Once you've spoken to Theorisk, we will need to make our way to McGruber's Woods. So I am going to be using a Feather Ring, and I think the closest one should be the Grand Exchange. And I'm going to be using the Teleport option ALS. At McGruber's Wood, we will need to fight two Axemen. 
bring some food if you want to, but they shouldn't really deal any damage to you. Let's go to Make Rivers Woods by going to Faring Coat ALS, or by teleporting to the Ranging Guild, or by teleporting to Sears Village. Let's go to the entrance of the Guardians of Armadale hideout and squeeze through the railing to start an instance. Let's kill the two Axemen. Once the final Axeman has fallen, we should be speaking to Idria. And she will say that we will need to meet her with all of her allies in Falador Castle. Let's go to the Squire of the Night Sword Quest, then go a bit further east inside, and I should find Idria, Theorisk, and someone else. Let's talk to Idria and select option 1. After speaking to the three characters, if you select option 1, you will get a free teleport to Drainer Market. There, between the Drainer Market and the Drainer Willows, there will be a shady stranger cloaked in grey. We will need to place the Tele Orb on the shady stranger. If this fails, the stranger will attack you. Simply teleport or run away and try again. Once the orb has been placed, make your way back to Idria at the Fowler Castle. Let's go back and let's talk now to the NPC, Akrisae. Let's talk to him and this will trigger a cutscene. After the cutscene is over, we will need to select option 1, 1, 1. The first option is to buy a Snapdragon seed for 18,900 coins. What? Let's buy a Snapdragon seed and let's teleport to Port Serum. Next, let's go northwest to Betty from the Hand in the Sand quest. Let's do the same thing from Hand in the Sand. Let's first talk to her and select option 3 and then 1 to buy a pink die for 20 coins. Next, let's talk to her and select option 2 about an enriched Snapdragon Seed. 
Next, go stand in the doorway on the dark tile next to the door. And let's use the lens on the pink die. Then use the pink lens on the counter to make it enriched. Once you have this, we will need to make our way back to Feldor. Take it from the counter and teleport to Feldor. Next, go upstairs using the western stairs. Make sure that you have a sea dibber if you do not have the barbarian training unlocked. Let's go upstairs, passing the Black Knight's Fortress a ceramic pass. Go upstairs to the top and let's dip the enriched seed in the herb patch. Next, go back downstairs, either using your achievement diary cape, option 3 plus cerebral, or go back downstairs and let's talk to Idria. Idria. Let's talk to her and she will say that we will need to speak to four NPCs. So what I am going to be doing is first quickly go to the bank and grab my NPC contact runes, which are air runes, cosmic runes and astral runes. If you don't want to use the NPC contact spell, then you can simply go to the four NPCs directly. If you do, then you simply need to swap spellbook to a lunars. And I think that the fastest way is to use your own or someone else's occult altar in a POH. If you want to use someone else's POH, make sure that you are on World 330 and make your way to the Remington POH portal. What is this? Let's cast NPC contact. Let's talk tutorial and select option 2. About Lucian. After speaking to him, let's talk to Matcha, the Slayer Master of Cannabis. Once again, option 2. After Machna. Let's talk to Durdal. Once again, option 2. And then finally, NPC contact on the final NPC at the bottom, Sirius, from the Dream Hunter quest. Let's talk to him. This time we don't need to select option 2. And after we are done with NPC contact, we can change our spellbook back to standard. This is needed for the remainder of the quest. Next, let's make our way back to Felidor and let's go back to our enriched Snapdragon Seed. It should be done growing. So let's go back to Ceramic Phase, go upstairs and grab the enriched Snapdragon Seed. You do not need a speed you do not need a spade to dig up these herbs. Once you have these, let's go back downstairs by either using the Achievement Cape Teleport or Climbing Stairs. On our way to the room, we may drop the notes number one, as well as notes number two, as well as the rose tinted lens. Now let's talk to the Druid Therisk. You should give us a true serum. Let's use the Enriched Snapdragon to make it a super true serum. Once you've done this, let's go southeast and go to the drawers. Open them to find some and search to find some charcoal and papyrus. Next, let's go and open the cell gate. And let's talk to the Shady Stranger. Select option 1 to use the Super True Serum. After we have received the sketch made by the Shady Stranger, we will need to exit the cell and let's talk to Indria. 
Indria, Indria, Indria. Where is Indria? Let's talk to her. And afterwards, we will need to talk to three more NPCs. All three are located inside or outside the Warriors Guild. So, let's teleport to the Warriors Guild. The first one outside is Gobble. Let's talk to him. Let's select option 2, about Lucian. And after speaking to him, open the door, and the first NPC that you see with the bright green hat with a giant white feather, let's talk to that NPC, number 2, about Lucian. And the final NPC that we will need to scout is upstairs. It is the NPC with the strength cape called Sloney. Let's open the heavy door and talk to him. Once again, option 2. After speaking to him, we will need to once again make our way back to Felador. This time, let's talk to Akrisai. And this will trigger a cutscene. After the cutscene is over, let's go to any bank to prepare for part 3, unlocking the first boss room. What we may deposit in our bank is basically everything. What we will need for part 3 is a bronze medium helm, iron chain body, an uncharged orb, 3 cosmic and 3 of any elemental rune, doesn't matter which one. And to be able to cast the Charge Orb spell, we must be on the standard spellbook. And lastly, what is also needed is to bring two different combat styles. The three Black Knights that we need to defeat are weakest to magic. But they use protection prayers, so make sure that you bring two different kind of combat styles. What is recommended is to bring one prayer and one stamina potion. And also clear up at least 8 empty inventory slots. Fill up the rest with some food and teleports. For the teleports, I'm going to be bringing along 2 teleports to the Black Knight Castle. I am going to be using the Mind Alter teleport. You could also use a Lassar or Edgefield teleport. 3 more teleports to Falador Castle. And then 1 teleport to any bank to prepare for the first boss out of 2. Once you think you are ready to unlock the next part of this quest, let's make our way to the Black Knight's castle. Either teleport to Lassar, or to the Mind Altar, or to Falador, or to the Edgefield Monastery, and go north of the Ice Mountain. Let's equip our Bronze Medium Helm and our Iron Chain Body, then go north, push the wall, and go down to the King's Ransom, where we found the king. Next, on the eastern side, we'll find a strange tile. Use any orb spell on it, doesn't matter which one, to unlock it. Next, go down. And we'll now need to go to something similar to the Waterbirth dungeon. Let's go north and start by using Protect from Range. Go north to the broken bridge and click on it to the sides to jump over. 
Once we have jumped over, use Protect from Melee, go north, and then take the first path going east. Once you've passed the guys using swords, go east and use Protect from Magic. Then climb up the wall. Once we have climbed up north, continue going north, keep using Protect from Magic, drink a stamina potion, keep going north, then use Protect from Range, and go west. Pass in the barricades and keep going west. Ow, those mages are strong. Keep going north until you see a solid door. Go through it. Use protect from melee. In this room, there are elite dark warriors and black knights. We must defeat three black knights to obtain the three pieces of their uniform which is the helm, the body, and the legs. Though, the elite black knights are quite tanky, and also they use protection prayers. Just make sure that you're using the correct combat style that they are not praying against. And for you, you can simply camp using protect from melee and you will take no damage. All right, once you have the full armor, let's equip it, all the three pieces, and then run away. They have a pretty short aggression range. Just run around, and none of them should be attacking you anymore. Next, let's go search around the room. First, at the northern wall, search the key rack to take the key. Next, the next table next to you. Take a lobster and a restore potion. Then on the western side, search that table for a law and death room. Then the southern table, take the strange orb. And then finally, let's make three empty inventory slots. Two of which can be a bronze medium helm and the iron chain body. Drop both. And once you have three empty inventory slots, let's open the wardrobe and then search it to find Dark Quell robes. Equip these and then go exit and then go the way you came. Next, go east. Keep going east and open the gate. Then open the gate right east 
Citadel finds Silith. Let's use a Restore Potion on him. Then right click and use the Lobster on him. And since we have equipped the robes and not the armor, Silith is already in the Elite Black Armor. Select option 1. Then open the gate. Go back west and go back to the room that we just came from. Open the solid door and then go straight east, like three tiles. Next to the war rope, there is a map board. Stand in front of it, talk to Silif, and he should start looking at it. And also, he will give you a tele orb that you will need to hide inside of the clothes of the first boss. But before heading into the first boss fight of this quest, I would first like to drop by the bank and prepare. What we may deposit is basically just our previous combat gear. But just to keep it simple, you can always deposit everything. What we will still need is our Dark Squall rope set, one Law and Death Rune, as well as both the Tele Orbs, the Strange one and the regular one. Now, what is highly recommended is to bring your best elemental spell, because the boss is immune to ranged, melee, as well as powered stuff, such as the Warp Scepter, Tumican's Shadow, and a Trident. Then also, because the boss has four different kinds of special attacks, to avoid getting 30 damage every special attack, you must bring the following runes. Every single elemental spell, which is air, water, earth, and fire. Telegraph runes, which are law and air runes. Alchemy runes, which are nature and fire runes. Bind, snare, or entangle spells, which are nature, water, and earth runes. And weaken runes, which are once again water and earth runes, but also body runes. To save on some inventory space, I suggest you to use a certain tome, as well as a combination staff. What you also could do to save some additional inventory space is to use a rune pouch. Next, just to get back to the boss room, one stamina potion dose, and a full prayer potion is also more than enough to last for the entire boss fight. The rest of the inventory can be food and teleports. The teleport that I'm going to be bringing is one teleport back to the Black Knight's castle, and three teleports to the Felder castle, as well as one teleport to any bank to prepare for part 4. Let's drink a stamina potion dose, make sure that your prayer points are at their maximum, maybe recharge your prayer, and let's make our way back to the Black Knight's Fortress. The Darkwell robes are the equivalent of wearing a iron medium helm and an iron chain body. Uh, let's go downstairs. Next, go north, and instead of going to the bridge, go a bit south and there should find a door. Turn your camera, use the solid door. What do you mean? I thought I unlocked this door, apparently not. So, let's jump over the bridge, go north, take the path east, climb up the wall, Nothing will attack you because you are one of the highest members. Or at least wearing the ropes of one of the highest members here. Then go north, pass the barricade, go west, to the end of this dungeon. Once you've reached the end of this dungeon, let's go to our combat options, turn off Auto Retaliate, and turn on your best spell. Next, go east and go to the northeastern corner. There you'll find a ladder. Climb up, 
And by clicking to continue three times, the boss fight will start after a cutscene. Use Protect from Magic at all times. Also, stay away from Surak as far as possible. Also, keep your magic spellbook open at all times. Once you see a special attack, then you're able to react to what it is. If it is a slow surge spell, you will need to cast the opposite of that spell. For the second special, Surak can spawn assassins. It is either a strong one, this one you will need to cast weakened on before you're able to deal damage to it, or an agile one. This one you will need to cast bind, snare or entangle on before you're able to damage it. And the last one is when it throws a lit explosive at you. To be able to negate this damage, you will need to telegrab it and then use high alchemy on it or low alchemy, doesn't really matter. Another bomb? No bomb for you. Once Surak has been defeated, let's... Yeah, just click on him. Plant Orb. I don't really know which one it is. I think the big one. Yeah. Next, once we have defeated him, we will need to make our way back to Falador. So, let's do so. 
and we're now going to be swapping places with Surak. No beekeeper, go away. So, let's talk to... Was it a specific NPC? I don't think so. So, just talk to any of them. Once the conversation is over, we will need to open the cell door to enter the cell and we will be swapping places with Surak. Next, I forgot the death room, didn't I? Go stand in the center of the room and I use teleport to deep wilderness. Let's go east and go climb the icy wall. Next, we'll need to jump on a ledge by clicking on the tile that we're standing on. And this will trigger a cutscene. No more strength cape for anyone. The strength cape has become discontinued. Once the cutscene is over, let's teleport to Falador and let's talk to any of the NPCs. After we've spoken to the NPCs, we will need to make our way to the bank to prepare to unlock the second boss fight of this quest. And therefore, we need absolutely nothing. So let's talk to all of the NPCs and after the conversation is over, let's go to the bank and deposit everything once again. I did not bring any bank teleport um, rock. Let's go to the bank and deposit everything. What we will still need is simply a sapphire lantern. What is recommended is between a minimum of 4 and 20 empty inventory slots. And if you want to, you could also bring some weight-reducing clothes. One teleport to Tears of Gethics, and one teleport to any bank to prepare for the final boss fight. And lastly, what we'll also need is our full Dark Quill rope set. So... Once you think you are ready for the second to last part, let's make our way to Tears of Gothix. Let's go north and climb the rocks. Let's talk to Mov Vario, the one that drew its hat's spies on him at the start of the quest. After speaking to him, we will need to use a sapphire lantern on any of the light creatures. Yes, there we go. 
it should be attached to us. And this will make us go into the abyss. Next, just a bit west, you'll find a skeleton. Remains, search it for a spade, then southwest, another skeleton for hammer and chisel. Then go back northeast, they'll find some rocks, use your spade on it. Then select option one twice to get a fire orb. Next, in the northwestern corner, use your spade on another set of rocks. Select option one twice again for an air orb, earth orb, earth orb. Next, go south and you'll find a air brazier. Search it in the southwest corner. Take the orb. Next, in the southeastern corner of this kind of square, you'll find a blue brazier. There you'll find inside, by selecting yes, a water orb. Take it and then go south. Go south to the southern wall. Turn your camera south. And there, on your left, when you zoom in, you'll find a rune engraved in some stone. Use the corresponding rune on the recess block. Zoom out, go to the center one. This is fire, use the fire orb on it. Then go to the right one, and this should be earth. Use the earth on the recess block. Then go back to the center and climb up the wall on the left or the right side. Do this twice. Once you have climbed the second wall, go to the center, use the water orb on the recessed block. Next, go back downstairs because a stone cube is still not inspectable. Go back downstairs and climb inside any of the skulls. Doesn't matter which order you do so. Crawl through to the end of the tunnel and there will find a mechanism. Zoom in and see what and see what kind of element is signed on it. Use the corresponding block on it and then exit. Do this two more times. Next, you have one fire block remaining. This one, you will need to climb the center wall back up twice. And let's use this on the recessed stone thingy inside of that big stone skull wall. Let's use the fire block on it and then the stone cube will be inspectable. Click on it to inspect and the mouth will open. Climb through to the next room. Next, go south. By the way, you may drop your tools. Those are no longer needed. If you want to, keep going south until you see a green brazier and a green skeleton. Search the skeleton for a silver sickle and a druid pouch and then inspect the brazier for a stamina boost. Because the next section, we will need to do some running. 
first let's go through the northeastern cavern. On the way there, let's use a druidic pouch on a druid spirit to get a herb and a secondary. Also, in this cave there will be some dead vines. If you cast bloom on them, you will get some vine flowers. You will need three vine flowers. Get three of them and then fill, right click and fill the druid pouch once more. And then continue through this cave to the next druid, get some more herbs. And let's see what the first altar gives. Because the altars in these caves are random for everyone. For me, this is prayer. I do not have the current herb or supplies for a prayer potion. So I will need to lay rest some more spirits. I will have to go back to that one later. So prayer is northeast. I will just go into the eastern cavern and try my luck. There. In total, we need to lay rest to 8 druid spirits to get 8 herbs and their secondaries. If you have the inventory space, then release all the druids immediately and then you can just simply run to every end of a cavern cave, place the herbal supplies on their corresponding statues, simply click on the statue to know what kind of herbal ingredients that you will need to use on the statue, and that's it. Whenever you run out of energy, just make your way back to the center of this tunnel system and inspect the stamina brazier. Once again, all the herbal or potion supplies, as well as the location of the statues, are random for everyone. Except for the south-southeastern one. On three of my counts, the statue in the south-southeastern cavern always had the Gothic's balance potion. You may do with that information as well you like. That is it really, run to every end of a cavern, use the herbal supplies on it, get the dolmen, and once you have all eight, get back to the center room.
Once we have our 8 dolmens, let's make our way to the center room. For good measure, maybe inspect the stamina brazier one more time before placing the dolmens on the small circular stone table just south of the stamina brazier. Place all 8 of them to unlock the final boss room of this quest. Click to continue and let's make our way to any bank to prepare for the final boss fight. We no longer need our dark quoll rope set, so basically deposit everything. What we will need for the final boss fight, I suggest you to bring your best crossbow and your good defensive ranged gear. For example, Carol's or Missouri. The boss is also weakest to heavy ranged damage, so I suggest you to bring a crossbow and some diamond bolts or ruby bolts, or both. The boss also wants you to switch combat styles, and I'm going to be bringing melee. I don't really think that bringing magic would be that great, but I guess you could bring like a trident of the seas, but I don't really think that bringing switches for magic because they're made out of paper is a really good idea. For the remainder of the inventory, a sapphire lantern, a teleport to the boss room at Tears of Gothics, and then also three super restore potions, and the rest of the inventory can simply be some food. Before we're getting out there, maybe drink a combat potion dose. And fill the rest of the inventory with food. And let's get going. Let's teleport to Tears of Gothics and then climb the rocks. After climbing the rocks, make sure that you're standing at least a couple of tiles away from those rocks before you're using your lantern on any of the light creatures. Then select option 2 to go into the abyss. By the way, if you happen to die from this boss, your gravestone will be here next to Morvorio. Once you're into the abyss, let's run south, climb the wall twice, and then go through the opening in the big stone wall skull. Then at the druid spirits, let's first go to the brazier, get 100% run energy, and then run south to the boss. Once we are stacked up on prayer and energy again, let's continue through the dungeon going south until a cutscene starts. After the cutscene, the balanced guardian will start attacking you. Try to use ranged as much as possible. However, that is not your number one priority. Your number one priority is to activate your correct overhead prayers. I suggest to zoom in and pay close attention to the balanced guardian. If it has an orange flame mohawk, then it will start to attack with ranged. If the mohawk changes to light blue, then it will start to use magic. If the color changes to white, you will need to activate protect against melee. If you do not activate your overhead prayers on time and you will get damaged, 
all of your combat stats will get drained by the equal amount of damage that you've taken. And the Balanced Guardian attacks very accurately. Hence we've brought three Super Restores. Once the Balanced Guardian's health reaches below 150, the attack speed as well as the color changes increase rapidly. Do not panic, your number one priority is to pay close attention to the Guardian, switch prayers, and if you can and if you have time, drink a potion or attack back. If you start focusing on damaging and not on your prayer, then you will lose your fight. Number one priority, switch prayers and attack if you can. You don't even need to switch combat styles, just keep attacking it with ranged and eventually the protect from missiles overhead prayer will eventually turn off. Only switch combat styles when you're able to do so. Yes, don't fuck it up now. Just wait patiently and switch your prayers. Don't rush. What? Okay. 
once the balance guardian is defeated congratulations you've basically completed your quest next let's touch the stone of jazz for the second to last cutscene of this quest also this will spawn two tormented demons tormented demons are the baby version of the boss that we have just defeated First, it has overhead prayers, so to be able to deal damage, we must use the combat style that it is not praying against. Second, it has one special attack. You will know when the special attack happens when you get stunned. Simply run away a couple of tiles to make sure that you're not standing on the tiles that have a shadow on it. If the tormented demons are firing a small fireball, then use protect from magic. If they're firing orange looking arrows at you, then use protect for missiles. If they're doing either, then it wants to attack you with melee. Since you defeated the balanced guardian, the tormented demons should be no problem, especially since you've just touched the stone of jazz, your stats are now level 256. Ah, oh, where am I going? Did I just die from a tormented demon? Hell no, where the hell was I going? Once you've defeated both the tormented demons, let's talk to Idria, level 115, and select option 1 to teleport to Falador. Once back at Falador, let's talk to any of the remaining NPCs to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed while Gothic sleeps. You are awarded with 5 quest points, 50,000 Hunter Experience, 75,000 Herblore and Farming Experience, 80,000 Thieving Experience, Access to Tormented Demons, Ability to Upgrade your Arc Light to Ember Light, and Ability to Craft a Demon Bane Bow and Demon Bane Staff. And then lastly, your final reward is by talking to the replacement of Duradel. Select option 4 and then 2 about Duradel, it will gain 15 times your Slayer level in Slayer XP, if you read Duradel's notes. And that's it, you may drop Duradel's notes, we no longer need the bore, you may release it, as well as the two notes that we've gotten from the basement of the battlefield of Khazard at the start of the quest. The Dark Quell rope set you can probably store in your POH, and the Strange Tele Orb the only use that this thing has is that it allows you to teleport between the icy path of Desert Treasure 1 and the Chaos Temple or the deep level Chaos Temple. So you're standing on top of that Zamorak Temple. If you're never going to be using that area, then you may simply destroy it. This was my guide how to complete while Gothic sleeps. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.